Joining us live this morning is Captain Shane Drakes from the Barbados Defense Force, in case you had to guess the organization, as well as Sub-Lieutenant Sasha Marshall. I should have done ladies first. It's okay. Welcome to the set of Morning Barbados. Welcome to our home. Thank and you. it's so good to have you to talk about Trade Winds 2024. Now, the last Trade Winds was 2017, yes. and I mentioned on Monday, I got to attend some of the after-party events. But tell us more, because this is serious business. And so, so Captain Drakes, uh, tell me what division you're in charge of for, for exercise trade winds. Good morning, Dr. Connell. Um, I'm in charge of the land and interagency aspect of the training. Mm -hmm. So that's all the ground forces, troops, all those things that cover land-based operations. Right. So interagency, is, is that any other security agencies, maybe police? and? So the interagency comprises the Barbados Police Service, the Department of Emergency Management, Caribbean Impacts, the Immigration Department, Customs, Barbados for your service. So we have a whole host of agencies coming right. together to provide this interagency track. So I heard through the grapevine that you guys actually worked together quite a lot in a recent pandemic. Is that correct? Yes, we did. Yeah, so you had a lot of background training and, and getting all of the systems and personalities gelling. Yes, we've been working together for numerous years. Even before my time in the force, we've always been working together to ensure the security of Barbados. All right, so that's good stuff. Now, I know you, Sub-Lieutenant Sasha Marshall, you're a track lead planner for the maritime side of things. So talk to us about how things differ uh, apart from the obvious in terms of what you need to do to be able to get us ready from the Barbados side of things. Okay, so as a lead planner, we have six subtracts. We have a EUF, which is illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing. We have a track that's focused on engineering, diving, um, a cutter track, which is the, the boats. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right, so yeah, that's basically it. But in terms of getting ready, obviously it's a lot of um, cooperation. Um, we also have to inform the fisher folk because as a maritime trap, we're going to be in their space and we'll be affecting them a little bit. So there's also that. So the maritime trap seems like such a big portfolio. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that Cap Captain Drake's is right next to you, but it must be a lot of work. It is, but I mean, it's the army. So you, you're prepared and you also have a team, an excellent team who's there ready to assist. Right. right that's wonderful stuff. Now for you, Captain Drake's, what are some of the expectations going into... Uh, Trade Winds 2024. I know things across the world have changed mm -hmm, since yes. the last time we had it. Uh, so what are some of the ex expectations going in? So because we're hosting Cricket World Cup 2024, our expectations are based on providing those security aspects, being able to counter drug personnel, counter terrorist operations, um, even as far as countering persons using the event to provide uh, picketing operations. So, so the whole world is on hype right now. And yesterday I heard, what do you call it, Tisha, a backfire from a car, and I was, I was alarmed. So what kind of things should we be looking out for during trade winds? So during trade winds, um, we've been sensitizing persons within the neighborhoods close to the areas where we'll be operating, mm -hmm. so that when they hear any loud gunfire, any loud explosions, they're encompassed with multiple soldiers and police officers all wearing different uniforms that they don't panic during that time so they understand that between the 12th and the 15th of may mm -hmm. there'll be certain exercises going on they won't know the exact date because we still need that surprise and surprise. that shock and awe surprise element. Mm -hmm. element so let's talk benefits how does this benefit us as Barbadians? I think people generally want to know stuff like that. Okay, so because we have in excess of over a thousand persons coming into the island for trade with, we've had benefits as it relates to a large influx into the economy because we need to book hotels. We have um, contacted some local suppliers for food and some other services. So there's that economic benefit to the island. So I did not think the economic benefit, but of course you have so many people coming in and it's, it's regional and international. International, yes, that's correct. Yeah, who are your main international partners? Um, the U.S. Southcom. Right. Um, this is United States Southern Command and they're actually co-hosting the event with Barbados this year. So what types of simulations can we look forward to uh, when you talk about uh, the element of surprise? 
I know you might not want to take away from that, but generally, uh, what types of simulations do you need to do mm -hmm. uh, to complete an exercise like this? So we'll basically be having simulations for active shooters and hostage situations as well. We'll also have um, wreck control simulations, and we'll have a very large footprint for mass casualty management mm -hmm. should there be a collapsed structure so we can practice that response mechanism to be able to respond effectively should there be anything happening like that. I suspect you're going to be working a lot with medics like myself. In fact, one of them is in the studio this morning in emergency medicine in terms of mass casualty. Yes, we do. And we also have our field medical facility. We have numerous volunteers there. A lot of them are already practicing doctors, surgeons, nurses, you name it, have volunteered for our field medical. And they would be that main response mechanism along with the Department of Emergency Management should there be a mass casualty event. Let's talk about some of the simulations on the water. Did we cover all of everything that will be going? Because seemingly I heard a lot of what will be happening yeah. on land, but what about maritime side? Okay, How will that differ? So two of the biggest things, um, we're conducting gun exercises, which is live firing exercises at sea. And these will be done on the 6th and on the 7th of May. And these will happen down in the north of the island, so about five to eight nautical miles off of Harsons Point. Mm -hmm. So persons in that area, obviously fishermen, they'll need to be aware of that. Absolutely. So people living in St. Lucie, for instance, won't be able to come or even further from St. Lucie and maybe try out their shooting skills? No, of course not. I'm just not. joking. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, no, that's an important exercise. Yeah. And you know, every time Trade Ring comes here, every, what is it, seven years or so? Your, your last one was in? It varies. The last yeah. one was in 2017, before yeah. that. 2012, 12. but prior to that was 2003. Yeah, it really so. signals a success story yes. for CARICOM as well, coming together as a region, working in defense of a region and with our external partners. Correct. And you need some volunteers? Yes, we do. Over 300 volunteers will be needed to ensure that we have a successful exercise. Um, you can volunteer <coughs> as well, sir. I have a full same. studio of people here who are willing to volunteer. Who, who work with us for Morning Barbados. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. Roel is back there volunteering. So uh, tell us how we can. And to be able to volunteer, you can go on the Barbados BDF.com website or BGIS. There's a link there that you can click and then just follow the page and it will lead you exactly how to volunteer. And then our volunteer lead, Captain Crystal Harvey, she'll be in contact with all the volunteers to give them their briefings tell them where they are needed, what time they are needed for, what they'll be required to do, and what event they'll be participating in. So do I need to be like really physically fit? I'm not declaring anything on national TV, but I can do at least 10 push-ups without stopping. So how fit do I need to be to, be part to participate in this? You don't need to be reasonably fit because we're going to select persons from across all demographics. So for example, you have persons being Mulaj with those realistic looking injuries, broken hands, right. damage, head trauma, and such like that, so that the persons can practice their skills in doing their basic medical. And speaking of practicing, mm -hmm. I know usually Barbadians get to see you out in your full regalia when it's time for pomp and ceremony. Mm -hmm. So they don't often think about what you need to do behind the scenes to be able to prep for this. So even though you're preparing and as track leads, I would imagine it has taken and will take a long time for you guys to get yourselves ready. So what has it been like preparing internally for trade rains? Okay, well, first of all, this preparation has started since last year, January 2023. It's been a long process, wow. but we've also been doing training, uh, internal training across the Caribbean. We've been doing internal training. Actually, we recently had another exercise in preparation of this. So it's been training across the board and at various levels in various areas. But the public hasn't been involved in this training, obviously. This is all internal to the, the BDF, so we wouldn't have seen any of this occurring. Right. No, not usually. So, so just physical training, because you know people think defense force, they think all physical, but there is a lot of strategic mental energy that you guys put into these exercises as well, right? Yes, there is. Yeah, and lots of planning and lots of long hours. He's not giving anything away. He's not giving anything away. I'm trying Poker to get... Poker face. Yeah, I like it. I think it? that's what it's all about. I see something over there. Yes. Uh, being as gypsy as I am, <coughs> Beige and Parlance. So you have a nicely folded BDF t-shirt. Mm -hmm. It is military folded. And this is the shirt that the volunteers will be receiving. Right. So I think I can fit into that one. So After volunteering, you still have a memento to keep 
to yeah. show to your grandkids or your friends at home that you volunteered for Exercise Trade Wins 2024. Promoting a secure Caribbean 2024 and beyond. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this strategically now. Uh, how important is it for us to be on board, prepared and ready mm -hmm. for any eventuality? I know certainly through training with the UN mm -hmm. and various other organizations as Caribbean people, some mm -hmm. of us aren't even open to what can happen naturally because mm. we are small island developing states. So how important is, a, is it for us to be truly uh, aware, ready, and have a plan for any eventuality really, but most importantly, natural disaster? It is extremely important. It cannot be understated. If we look back at some of the incidents in the region, um, hurricanes passing through the Dominican and Caribbean, and as you know, the BDF has assisted with HADR. So it's essential that we are prepared. I mean, we probably will not be prepared for everything, mm -hmm. but the more training we do, then it, it puts us in a better position. Uh, if and we, we have a hurricane season approaching, yes, right? We which yes, we, we need to be prepared for. Precisely. And hopefully nothing happens during trade winds, but the, sh the season is drifting earlier and earlier during yes. the year, and you're May, f May 4th, is it? Yes. May 4th, May 4th to, 16th. to the 16th. Yes. You never know what might happen, but we need to be prepared. Yes. Absolutely. And as Tisha was saying, because we're in the Caribbean and we're um, co collaborating, mm -hmm. it's also important that we get that training so that when a real situation happens, we know how to operate together. So I know we mentioned St. Lucie specifically. What are some of the other areas across the island where people will need to know? Or I see the trying to get info coming out. out. I don't know how much we can tell. I know you want that element so of surprise, but I'm sure this. there's a little give. Um, as I said, we've already sensitized the persons within the actual training areas, so we'll be operating in St. John, close to the Bath area, not going to give exactly where. Mm. You'll be at, operating in Tumaya Hill, close to one of those two areas there. But it's going to be at ESC <laughs> for ease of reference. You'll also be operating within the Bridgetown domain at Kensington Oval as well, because that's where the main event will happen for Cricket World Cup 2024. So we have to make sure that all those protocols those tactics, techniques, and procedures that are required to respond should anything happen. We keep our fingers crossed that we have a safe and effective Cricket World Cup. So those are basically some of the areas. I know you can tell me this. So after trade wins, after all the hard work and everything, you guys must have the opportunity to make connections across the Caribbean and, and internationally. And you, you might, of course, get valuable contacts as well to stay in contact with. Is that correct? Yes, we will. Um, we also participate in a lot of overseas training, international training. So sometimes we have persons that we already know are persons that are friends of persons that we've trained with. So when we have an exercise like this, we also see familiar faces all the time. I see familiar faces. Someone is shouting you, someone is giving you a hello. So yes, we have a lot of partnership going on. Mm -hmm. And we also build other partnerships as we go forward. I want to double back and close out on the volunteers. I think mm -hmm. at this stage, we're going to continue to have our discussions mm -hmm. on Morning Barbados. But I think it's important to kind of sensitize people and get them in that frame of mind of volunteering. So let's talk age ranges. Um, you know, do you need volunteers of every age? Do you have to be a certain age? How does that work? So for the volunteers, as you've seen, this is a pretty small shirt. <laughs> so you'll be taking volunteers from primary schools, secondary schools, tertiary institutions. We've already contacted the Barbados Youth Advanced Corps, mm -hmm. um, University of the West Indies, also Community College, and there's also in the normal Barbadian domain anyone that wishes to volunteer. So it doesn't depend on age. It's once you want to volunteer, you go on the link and we we'll take anyone that's willing, especially you too. And then uh, are you assigned? Uh, based on the coordination, uh, maybe some mm -hmm. people helping behind the scenes and others for the actual simulations. Is that how it will work? Yes, but the operational aspect will be done by the exercising troops, which will be the persons participating in trade wins. But all those, some of the behind the scenes were um, persons having special skills. We could use all of those um, even to help those persons as we go forward for the exercises. And I know you will want to advise Barbadians because we're heavy handed when it comes to social media these days. Mm -hmm. And when you have these simulations going on, we have to be mindful that we don't want to put some of these simulations out there and have people panic to the place where we have 
some trouble. Right. So what advice would you give in that regard? So that's why we've been doing a lot of these social media, um, you know, sending out the information so the public is as aware as they can be. Mm -hmm. But we really want to advise people to desist from recording the videos and sharing them. And if they share them, they have to make sure that they're letting the public know it's an exercise. Right. But to avoid like mass panic, just don't share the videos. Are you on social media? No, I'm not. You're, the BDF, I think I saw... Oh, you mean BDF? Yes, yes, yes. yes. You are on social yes, media. Yes. So if you need to Facebook, see videos, yeah. you can visit the website. Um, as Captain Drake said, we have bdfbarbados.com. Right. Check out the websites and you get all the information. I will check you out during the break for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be very exciting. It will be. I definitely will volunteer so you can look out for <coughs> a Barbados, you heard that. volunteer <laughs> from here at the corporation. I was already recruited by Lieutenant Gollop. Ah. Oh, you know? right. yes. um, and that's the lady who helped to coordinate uh, some of this. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we, we plan to, to play our role. Of course, as media, yes. uh, it's important that we also uh, share what's happening as it happens too. So I want to thank you for coming in. Thank you for thank I know you waking us. up early might be a regular thing for you as for well. You guys, but sure. <laughs> most certainly coming out to share is very important. Exercise Trade Winds 2024 is going to be here in Barbados 4th to 16th of May. And uh, we've had Captain Shane Drakes and Sub Lieutenant Sasha Marshall here sharing with us this morning. So. I really look forward to it. And I heard you. I know you're going to have to do some stuff, but you said you're going to volunteer, too. I'm going to volunteer. That only came out after you saw the T-shirt, though. Yeah. It's just about my size as well, after I get all buffed in the gym. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to come out and volunteer. I'm not going to do anything physically active, uh, but I will be there. And I know my colleagues, the medical fraternity is going to be there, of course, helping you guys out yes, in the hospital yes. as well. Well, good stuff.